Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to The Sip, your daily dose of just the right tea. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. If you are new, my name is Eric. It is wonderful to see you, meet you, and greet you. And if you are returning, (laughs) what is up, squad? All right, guys, so keep in mind that this is a general collective energy reading. There are no dates, well, there are no signs associated with this reading. This is a collective reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. This is also a timeless reading. There are no dates associated with this reading. Whenever you are guided to watch this reading and it resonates, then that is the message for you in that moment. Please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Sharing these readings is highly recommended as it will help us get more of these messages to more of the people that see them or that need them that may not normally come across this reading or this video, okay? Um, Also, smashing that like button definitely helps with the YouTube algorithm to help get this out to more individuals who need these messages, yes? All right, guys, I'm gonna give this one more shuffle and we will see what our sit is for today. What's the tea today, spirit? What's going on with the collective? What does the collective need to know at this time? Well, you have the high priestess here with the ten of wands. Okay. Uh, two more cards. Okay. Okay, well, I guess we'll get that in a second. No, it's needed at this time. Okay, two more cards, please, Spirit. High Priestess, Ten of Wands. Two more cards. One, two. Okay. Ooh, High Priestess, Ten of Wands, the Tower, and the Seven of Swords. Okay. Somebody here is struggling with some burdens. I also he- I'm also hearing with some boundaries. Um, all right. What I'm getting from this energy here, overall energy right now is the four of cups. Okay. Well, well, if you would, there we go. Okay. All right. Overall energy is the four of cups. I, I really, honestly, you guys, I feel like this is you. This four of cups energy is you. You're feeling apathetic about something. Um, you're feeling like something is not going your way or, Um, you're feeling like you're losing, you're lacking in a desire to involve, you don't, you're lacking involvement in a certain situation, lacking a desire to involve yourself in a, or get involved or remain involved in a certain situation. And that is, and, and, and normally this four of cups energy wouldn't be the best. Okay. The four of cups represents apathy. The four of cups represents, um, missing an opportunity Right, because in this card here, um, there is a hand extending from a cloud holding a cup, very much like the Ace of Cups here, um, and that represents some sort of offer. Okay, but the offer is not being taken by you or by whomever the subject of this energy is, the subject of this reading is. This could either be you, you guys, or this could be someone that you are connected to. Okay, someone maybe that you're cross that you're watching this reading for that you have in mind um this could be a romantic partner or a potential romantic partner someone that you would like to be your romantic partner this could be an offer that you're trying to extend to someone and actually quite frankly you guys uh, i in, in speaking to this side of the reading this does feel like a masculine energy that i'm picking up on who is trying to extend their love to someone Who's trying to find the right proper, who's uh, the right proper, the, the right mate, the, the proper mate, the appropriate mate. And seems to be going by the things, you know, going by, you know, the rules and, and, and sticking to, well, the rules. Okay. The rules of engagement and which would, whatever, would, and that, those rules would be whatever it is you're trying to manifest. You're trying to stay within the realm of that manifestation, you know, to, 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 to bring it into you. Okay. That's fine. Um, but regardless as to whatever this is specifically, this four of cups feels like you or someone that we're talking about here, someone that you may be connected to, whomever the the subject of this reading is your lack of desire to be involved. And the strange thing about it this time 
is that the universe is picking up on this energy. It's as if the universe is taking note of your desire for change here. Because this Four of Cups does feel like a desire for change. And that's where the High Priestess comes in. The High Priestess is the universe here. Okay, is it the forces, the, the high priestess is the forces, the forces are the forces that be, okay, that are working on your behalf. You could see this as your spirit team, your guides, your ancestors, your way showers, God source, creator, spirit, whatever. In your apathy, in your lack of desire to be involved, in your desire for change. There is a recognition here by the universe of the burdens you are carrying. And there seems to be some sort of tower moment that's coming that's going to change all of that. Either this tower moment is going to start to bring down certain illusions in your life that are kind of causing this lack of desire to be involved, that are... Um, See, I don't even really know if you know what's really going on here in terms of whatever this situation is for you. But regard all you know, all you know, you guys, is that or all this person knows is that they just don't want to be involved with this any longer. Or there's something about this situation that's like, this is not me. This is not who I am. This is not what I want. Um, there's some sort of deception, trickery, cheating, lying stealing backstabbing there's some sort of there's some sort of backhanded energy involved with this situation and what you're not aware of yet or currently is that the universe is working on behalf of this situation here to bring these energies down either this is happening in a secretive way and you're not aware of it or the secret something about the secrets the lies the trickery the tomfoolery is about to come crashing down and all you really need to do is keep to yourself. Like I would not ad normally advise anyone to stay in this four of cups or this apathetic place because that really is not a beneficial energy a lot of the time. But what it feels like you're involved with here or what it feels like somebody is involved with here, it makes perfect sense why you don't want to be involved. And quite frankly, it is advised that you, that you remain not involved. Because there's something here that's going on that is just not quite right. Okay, Spirit is saying get a little bit more on the from the cards here before we move to clarification. Okay, what's next, Spirit, in this situation? What's next? What else do you have to say here? You have the King of Wands in reverse. Okay. Oh, boy. Uh, the Emperor... And the Nine of Cups. Do you want me to fill out the rest of this? Yes. Okay. I'm going to fill out the rest of this. Three more cards, please. Death. The Hanged Man. One last card, please, Spirit. And the Knight of Swords. Okay. And then the overall energy. Ooh -wee! The overall energy here is the Queen of Swords. This is your level of discernment. And what I'm feeling here, you guys, is this level of discern discernment is exactly on point. But you, but this is so subtle, you guys, that you don't even really know what it is you are discerning against. All you know is, I ain't trying to have no part in that. Thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> okay, you have the first card that's come out here in this next level of uh, of the reading here is the King of Wands reversed. Um, and when the King of Wands came out, um, I, I immediately I felt like there was some sort of community or group activity or group association, communal communities association here that you don't want to move forward with, that you do not want to pursue. And then from there, okay, so you have the King of Wands reversed. The King of Wands reverse is literally the lack of action that you that you're that the, 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 the desire to not take action here. 
Honestly, I don't even want to know. I don't even want to say it's a desire to not take action. This kind of feels like a requirement because then from there we go to the heart, to the emperor, excuse me, we go to the emperor to the nine of cups and the emperor is coming through on your behalf saying, nope, don't touch that. Nope. Don't go in that direction. Nope. Don't get involved with that. We don't want to be involved with that. The emperor is coming through as the, like the executive energy of your own life that is holding very strict and very specific boundaries because what it is what it feels like you could act you could actively get involved with or be involved with here you guys feels toxic and poisonous and it would help you to lose a sense of happiness and contentment in your life the 9 of cups the emperor is coming through for you saying you know you don't want to be involved with that like i'm not going to give you all the answers high priestess or the emperor, the emperor is kind of coming through as that strong authoritative figure saying, I, I don't need to explain myself to you. All you need to know is you don't want to be involved with that. It's toxic. It's a toxic environment. Um, it's low vibrational situations. It's low vibrational people. The emperor is coming through as an element of yourself. A very mature, masculine-oriented energy side to yourself that's saying that is kind of holding the boundaries of the empire you seem to have grown or developed up until your life thus far. That makes perfect sense. Because many of us here on this channel, if you've been following along, I mean, this I've been... We've had divine conversations going for four years now. But, um, and, and if you've been following along, you know, many of us that have been following along for so long, we've gone through some massive growth and expansion and development. We've gone through a strong level of the balancing and harmonizing and union of the masculine and feminine energies within us, which technically would really be represented by the emperor and the empress. And many of us started on the side of the Empress. We were dominantly femininely oriented. We got that healed. We got the Empress within us flourishing. And then we got the masculine side healed. And now that is coming through as the Emperor. The Emperor has been coming through a lot. Whether it's in um, any of the general readings for the signs or, you know, the SIP here, these daily collective readings... Or personal readings that I've been doing for people, which I am available for. If you'd like to get one, check the information in the description box below. But the masculine, specifically in the form of the emperor, has been coming through a lot for the collective. Because we've healed and integrated and balanced and harmonized this masculine side to us. And now this masculine side can serve us well in holding the boundaries that need to be held in order to preserve our empire as it stands and to preserve the situation so that we can continue to build it and grow it into more. And that's kind of why the emperor is coming through here and saying, look, I really don't need to explain myself. It's really not even worth the explanation. All we know, all you need to know is you don't want to be involved with that. If you want to remain happy, if you want to stay in this level of contentment here, nine of cups, okay, However minuscule that may seem for you. But if you want to stay in this level of contentment here, then you need to trust me on this and just not be involved. What I'm also kind of getting from this, this feels communal, you guys. This feels communal. This feels like it's, it has associations with many other people, or at least there are many other people doing this same thing. But what I'm getting with this situation is it's real sticky, Ten of Wands. Like it, it, it's so burdensome that individuals that get that that decide to enter into this realm or get involved with this situation or play with or play this game with others, you get in there and you get stuck with so many burdens. Some people like it. Some people get in it and be like, holy shit, I can't do this. How the hell do I get out? And then they're stuck. Because they've got all of this shit to carry. All of this shit to be responsible for. Like, they stepped in it now. So there is, a, there is a very strong defense mechanism coming in for you saying you don't want to be a part of this. And why is that? Next we move to death and the hanged man. You have gone through a massive transformation. And even though, even though you've gained a certain level of change in perspective, it does feel like 
There is a level of apathy involved here. There is a level of discontentment involved here. It's like this change in perspective that you have gained, this higher wisdom, this higher perspective is like a double-edged sword. While it keeps you, in a, to a certain degree, it helps to keep you out of sticky situations such as this, whatever this is describing here for you, the, the High Priestess, Ten of Wands, Tower, and the Seven of Swords. While it keeps you out of sticky situations like this, it's still a perspective that's like, wow, this is really shitty. Like, I know I don't want to be a part of that, but wherever I find myself right now, this current in-between space that I find myself right now, in right now, it's not like this is a, you know, all gumdrops, rain, uh, rainbows, and, and butterflies. <laughs> no, you're right. But that's why you also have this Knight of Swords here. Because you are fighting forward. You are moving forward. It feels like you are a warrior on the front lines. Absolutely on the front lines. And there's this Queen of Swords energy at the bottom of the deck saying to you that that's your level of discernment here. That's, that's your feminine side coming through saying, hail to the motherfucking no. We ain't doing that. And she's another energy that's like, don't argue with me. Don't talk back. I told you no. It's for your own good. Just trust us on this one. There is a reason why you are either being held back from something right now or you are not desiring to be involved with it right now. There is a massive collective shift that is happening that, and that is why you don't want to be involved with this because anybody that finds themselves caught up in this is about to get their shit wrecked. Is about to learn some really tough lessons. Okay. Let's get into some clarification. Yeah? Five shuffles here. One. Two. Clarification for the collective, please, spirit. That's three. Four. And five. All right, first thing I want to clarify, and to be honest with you guys, I really just want to clarify this top row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to move all of this. I'm going to move all of this over. I'm going to leave it right here so that you can still see it, okay? But I want to, well, you can barely see it, but <laughs> that's okay. Let's move it here. Maybe this is better. I still want you guys to see that. It's good enough. It's off to the side. I want to, oops, I want to clarify this, all of this right here, okay? Well, maybe but most of it. What I want to start with is the Seven of Swords, okay? First of all, look at this. At the bottom of the deck, you do have the Queen of Pentacles. And this Queen of Pentacles came out yesterday. She did come out in reverse, all right? But it's this level of self-respect, honor within yourself, not wanting to, not literally not allowing yourself to stoop down to some really low levels. This feels, this queen of pentacles energy feels like not allowing yourself to be some sort of sellout. If that's, if that's applicable in this situation. Because remember, this is some sort, I'm picking up on a collective energy here. Some sort of group, some sort of communal thing. And this queen of pentacles is like, oh no, oh no, 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 no. Oh no, honey. I know I'm way, I'm worth way more than that. Oh No. Oh, this is this is literally one of those moments where the Queen of Pentacles represents the energy of, oh, no, that's beneath me. And we're not saying that from some sort of egoic place or some sort of extremely entitled place. No, we're saying that from a place of knowing your worth and literally saying that is literally rolling around in the mud and the dirt. And that's not what I'm about. Let's clarify the Seven of Swords first. Clarify the Seven of Swords, please, Spirit, for the collective. Five of Pentacles, Five of Wands, Knight of Swords. Look at that. Overall energy is the Ace of Cups. I mean, you can't get any more clear than this. This Ace of Cups says, I have more, I have self-love. I have self-respect. All right. And this Seven of Swords energy here is lack mentality, is differing of opinion, is competition, is fighting against each other. One-upmanship. I mean, I understand you have the Knight of Swords twice here, but the Knight of Swords in this situation feels detrimental. 
it feels like people literally competing against each other, trying to tear each other down, trying to one up each other. It's interesting that we don't have the five of swords here. But I guess conversely, we have the knight of swords and that's just as destructive, maybe even more so than the five of swords. This situ whatever this situation is that you don't want to be a part of any longer, it's deceptive because underneath the surface, there is lack mentality. There are people that are just trying to be popular, that are just trying to be seen, that are just trying to be, that are not being authentic. Either because they don't, they don't believe in themselves, they don't feel worthy enough to be their authentic selves, they don't feel like their authentic selves will be enough. There's a five of wands here also, which is competition, one-upmanship, and the knight of swords. I mean, underneath the surface... This is not, this is deceptive. Whatever this, all, okay, what I want to say about this, you guys, is all that is glitter, all that glitters is not gold. This is some gold-plated, I want to say cubic zirconium, but they don't, but cubic zirconium is like fake diamonds. You don't gold plate a, a, a cubic zirconium, but you get what I'm saying. Like, under, like, like, I don't even, this is some gold-plated aluminum. Not to speak ill of aluminum, like, but like in terms of what it is that you want, when you want gold, you don't want some, uh, some metal that is lacking in the value that the true metal that you want is, you know what I mean? And you definitely don't want it plated or, or mis sold to you. you. You get what I'm saying. All that glitters is not gold. Ace of cups is the overall energy, lack of self-love. It's like they're looking, whomever is involved in this situation like this is looking for the love and acceptance that the divine would give them from the external world. And that's why they put on these masks, they put on this face, they put on this character or whatnot, whatever, that is not authentic to them. And that is the biggest reason as to why you don't want to get involved with this. Or at least you really shouldn't. At least not in this way. You want to be, you need to be authentic. Okay. With that said, let's look at the Ten of Wands then. Clarify the Ten of Wands for the collective, please, Spirit. Eight of Wands. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, see. Okay. Ooh, the Hierophant and the Six of Swords. That's so crazy. Overall energy is the star. All right, so um, that's really crazy because originally, oh, sorry guys, I keep hitting the camera here. Originally, what I was picking up on between the High Priestess and the Ten of Wands is that, or, okay, so initially, originally the Four of Cups was at the bottom of the deck of our main deck, right? And your lack of desire to be involved with this situation was being picked up on by the universe. And thus the universe here is taking certain steps to remove these burdens from your life, this Ten of Wands energy. Or remove some sort of burden, burdenous aspect to this out of the situation for you. Okay? Oh, goodness gracious. Jinx wants to come in. Hold on a second, you guys. Okay. Um, and I actually, what I want to say is... Um, humble yourself a little bit because it's not just for you that these burdens or this burdensome aspect is being removed. It's on behalf of the whole collective, the whole group, or this whole situation that is involved. There's something burdenous that is being removed. And that's what we're talking about with the tower here, okay? You just happen to be on the right side of that. So the Eight of Wands represents the clearing of this Ten of Wands energy. And why are you on the right side of this situation? Because you've learned very valuable lessons here. You've gone through some very rough and tumble, some very difficult or tough life or physical circumstances involved with this that has helped you ultimately reach this hang... Look, 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 look. The Hanged Man with Death. That's you right there. 
Okay, you've gone through the transformation. You, quite frankly, especially with this Queen of Swords energy here, you see through this clearly. Like you can read this shit like a book. You know exactly what's going on here. And thus, you are moving forward. You're moving forward in a, in a new direction. You're moving to a new place. A place where it feels like you're going to be much freer, uh, much happier. I mean, you do have the star at the bottom of the deck. You are being ushered towards, or I want to say, a space is being created in order for you to achieve or achieve your goals or receive your dreams here. But there is a massive collective situation or I guess involvement with this. I also want to point out here that the High Priestess and the Hierophant are counterparts. So you are working with the High Priestess energies right now. Whereas those individuals that are still part of this, whatever this collective involvement is, they're still working with the energies of the Hierophant. And let me tell you something, they're not learning the lesson so well. And I don't want to, I'm not, I definitely am not trying to speak ill of those people. Everybody goes through what it is they need to go through to learn their lessons. That doesn't make anybody any less worthy. Okay? It doesn't. Even though they find themselves in this really lack of worthiness type of energy, and they're about to get their shit wrecked, there's about to be a tower moment happening collectively, which is only going to probably help reinforce these feelings of lack mentality. But that's the thing. They're not lacking. They just need to, they need to be, they need to be removed from this mindset or they need to remove themselves from this mindset. Okay, let me stop rambling because next thing I want to clarify is this tower. Clarify the tower for the collective sister. Seven of wands reversed. Clarify the tower, please. The lovers. And one more card. Clarify the Tower, please, Spirit. And the Six of Cups. Ooh-wee! Overall energy is death. This, um, this actually really feels like an ego death, to be honest with you. Okay? Because there is some sort of high ground that people have been holding on to, that they've been keeping, that they think... There, there's a false, there's a false level of security here with this seven of wands reversed. False level of security. This feels very egoic. It feels like whomever seems to have had the high ground here, whomever seems to be holding some sort of top position, it's not. It's not really a top position that they think it is or the situation is about to be changed. And they're going to find themselves once where they once found themselves at the top leaders of the pack, whatnot, whatnot, whatever. Now they're about to find themselves at the very bottom. Seven of Wands reversed to the lovers and the Six of Cups. And what this feels like here is these individuals who are still involved with this situation are going to be faced with a choice. Either you can keep up with the status quo, you can continue trying to hold this top spot, how delu however delusional that may be, you can try, you can choose that, or you can choose to let go of the past. Let the past be the past and move forward here. This is why you don't want to be involved with this, you guys. Because really what I want to say is these people, some of these people here are really about to have their shit wrecked is literally what I'm hearing. Like it, this is going to be a massive, massive wake up call. There are going to be a lot of people involved with this that are going to find themselves completely upended and have no idea how to deal with this. Obviously, the universe is going to bring the aid, their aid in towards them. They're, the universe is not going to leave them completely asked out. Okay, the universe is not going to leave them high and dry, but they're about to find themselves in a position that they're not necessarily prepared for. Whomever is on the outside, standing on the outside, looking in, in this apathetic energy, four of cups, not wanting to be involved with the situation any longer, you are prepared for this. It's that exact energy of you being prepared that is, that is influencing you or putting you in this energy of, I don't want to be involved with that. 
And if you were to ask me why, I wouldn't be able to put my finger on it. I just know I don't want to be involved with that. And that's actually good enough for me to say no. I don't, I don't really need a reason. My intuition, my gut tells me I don't want to be involved. So I'm not going to. I might, I, might, I might be sitting here moping, being like, Muh, this sucks. But also, that sucks even more. I don't want anything to do with that. Mm-hmm. That's okay. Last thing I want to clarify here for the collective is the high priestess. What, the high, what does the high priestess, what advice does the high priestess have for the individuals that are holding this true high ground here? And I don't even like saying that. Part of this energy that it feels like we're in collectively, it's like, I don't want, I am not trying to say or sound like I'm any better than you because I know I'm not. I know we're all equals here. So in me saying we're holding this true high ground, ugh, even that feels icky. Like, what are you talking about? What? High ground? What are you talking about? I'm not better than anyone. I don't know any more than anyone. Maybe I'm a little bit more spiritually evolved. Okay, but even that I don't like saying because I don't like to, I, we, this energy feels like we're not trying to make any more divisions between me and you than there already are. Like, and there shouldn't be any in the, to begin with. Like, do you, are you guys picking up what I'm putting down? We're ascending here. But the more that we ascend, the more we become conscious of our unity. And the less and less we desire to be different or set apart or put apart from anyone. This energy down here is divisive. This energy down here is that competition of I'm better than you or I have more than you or I know more than you or I'm more talented than you or I'm more interesting than you. I'm funnier than you. I can sing better than you. I can dance better than you. I can create better content better than you. But, but, but all that bullshit. And that's exactly what's about to come crumbling down. Let's clarify the high priestess. What advice do you have for the, uh, for the collective high priestess, please? Ten of Pentacles, the end of a life circumstance. This is a big collective shift, okay? And what I'm getting with this Ten of Pentacles, I'm feeling like the High Priestess is saying, honey, buckle your seatbelts. Because I'm seeing an earthquake, what's, what's being symbolized as or represented as an earthquake, there, an earthquake here. There's about to be a massive upheaval. The King of Swords, look at that. King and Queen. Oh, sorry, King and Queen. You know, you, the, the Queen of Swords is coming through you, okay? But the King of Swords is coming through the High Priestess, and the High Priestess is the, is the universe counseling you, saying to you, this, there is an end to whatever this life circumstance is here for you. This King of Swords energy is delivering it to you straight, like straight as an arrow, just the facts. And you are responding energetically as the Queen of Swords saying, nope, I'm done. I'm good. I don't need to be involved with that. And the High Priestess is communicating with you non-verbally. You have evolved enough as a being to pick up the vibes that the universe is putting down without needing to have any sort of verbal confirmation of it. That's why some of this energy is like, I can't put this into words or I can't put my finger on it, but I know I don't want to be involved because you are picking up the vibes that the universe is putting down. Look at you. Look at that growth. Look at your evolution. Look at God. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. One last card of advice from the High Priestess, please, Spirit. Well, it didn't want to come out, so it didn't. One last. Ooh, oh, shit. We get three more cards. Okay. Eight of Swords. Sorry about that. I had to pause for a second. Eight of Swords. Five of Cups. King of Cups. Y'all can't make this shit up. Overall energy here. Who is the Ace of Wands. All right. So what this is saying, guys is, look, keep your wits about you, okay? We, we have reached the end of a certain physical, I, I want to call it a life circumstance, a life situation. We've reached the end of an era. There it is. We've reached the end of an era within human society. This is very physical, okay? Ten of pentacles. This is the physical realm. This is corporeal existence. We have reached the end of an era, 
and you need to and, and you need to be very clear on this even though I, I i know for a fact you already are we've been talking about that okay king of swords energy but stay as objective as possible because in terms of this, we're breaking free of some sort of mental prison, mental confinement, very egoic energy. And there is going to be a time of mourning involved. Eight of swords, five of cups. You need to keep your emotional wits about you. King of cups. Because quite frankly, darling, you see very clearly and you know exactly what's going on here. And you're, and, and also what I want to say is you're already feeling the pain of this loss, five of cups, because you, you have broken out of this mental, uh, mental confinement, mental imprisonment, this level of, um, being blind, blinded by the system. And you know that all of this is coming down. You know, this, whether it's conscious or it's just a feeling within you, you know, this is all about to come crashing down. And as someone that is on the front lines of this, you, and now this is a responsibility, 100% a responsibility. You, of all people, need to keep your wits about you and not allow yourself to spiral emotionally like the rest of the people are going to do. Why? Because we need some, some semblance or some level of stability going on here. We need some rocks that people can anchor themselves to as the storm of destruction comes raging through as this tower comes crashing down i'm not trying to be a doomsdayer here for anyone that is listening to this message and thinking i'm being a doomsdayer honey you have got it all wrong but for those of you that are sitting here like yup yup okay cool keep your wits about you we've reached the end of an era Closing Oracle Guidance from Old Faithful. Actually, actually, no, we're not going to go with Old Faithful today. We are going to go with the Sacred Rebels Oracle. And I don't use this deck very often because the descriptions of the cards in this deck tend to be quite lengthy, okay? But this actually feels really more appropriate. So we're going to go with this. Some encouragement for my sacred rebels here. Yeah, five shuffles. Here we go. One. Two. Three. Closing Oracle Guidance to the Spirit. For our collective sip, four. And five. All right. Closing Oracle Guidance, please, Spirit. Best messages for the collective to close out this reading. Damn. Okay, we do have two of them. Shit. Uh, okay. Card number 36, listening for truth. And card number five, follow your own rhythm. Um, and then the thing about this, this deck is that there are no shorter explanations here. So I'm feeling, I, I feel like, yeah, see, this is really freaking long. I'm being guided just to read one of them. And that's following your own rhythm. But here, this is where we are. Listening for truth, okay? We're in this level right now of experiencing a level of being able to hear and perceive of more of what the universe is saying to us. This is because of our personal evolution, the development of our intuition and our extrasensory abilities and all that kind of stuff. Our own evolution that we've gone through. We are listening for truth. We are outside the matrix, standing outside the matrix, looking in, listening for the real truth beneath all of the, 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 the chatter, the ruckus, all the bullshit, all of the levels of distraction that are being thrown at us constantly. 
And we are hearing this truth. And as a result, card number five, we are following our own rhythm. Five is a number of change, of great change. I know me personally, I've been seeing a lot of five, five, five lately, a lot of repeating fives. All right, you may be as well. Also here, three and six create nine, make a nine. Okay, and the number nine in terms of numerology, that's an ending. Shit, if you want to call this end times, I guess go ahead, because that's literally what I just heard. This is some semblance of a bit of an end times scenario, okay? Let's read uh, Follow Your Own Rhythm, card number five. All right, here we go. Deep within, you are moved by an ancient, powerful force that cannot be tamed. It is the, uh, it is the rising pulse of your connection to the life force. You feel it in your bones, in your blood, in your heart, and in your belly. Where there is something dying within, you sense it falling away, no longer needed. You sense when it is time to rest and be patient in transition. You feel the stirring of agitation and restlessness when new life calls you to create, to act, to step forward, and to take a risk. You know that you march to your own beat that no one else can tell you what your inner rhythms are and that you must trust in your own timing. You cannot be rushed or forced, nor can you be held back when it is time to burst forth. Life creates and supports the natural rise and fall of your inner rhythms. This oracle brings you the special message that you cannot miss what you are destined for, nor will you gain anything by trying to push yourself. Trust in the life cycles within, and you will feel the perfect balance between effort and surrender, discipline and letting go. When it is time for the rhythm of rest, you will feel a natural slowing within and be drawn into contemplation and environments that are more gentle, spacious, or nourishing, and perhaps more peaceful. When the rhythm of play beats in your heart, you will reach out to others to connect, dance, converse, sing, make music, make love, and share your wildness. You will be drawn to uplifting groups and places where you can experience a positive, energetic exchange. Your needs will be met in harmony with your own rhythms. All that you will miss out on by trusting this is anxiety. What you will gain is peace. No FOMO around here. I know that's right. If you... Oh, wait, no. We have not pulled that card. Okay. I'm going to leave it there, actually. No FOMO around here. I know that's right. Whew. Okay, so there you have it, guys. There is your daily sip. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. If you would like to get a personal reading with me, I am available for, available for that. Check the information in the description box below where I list the readings that I offer, including my email address. Shoot me an email letting me know you're interested, and I will be more than happy to get you all hooked up. Please make sure to follow us on Patreon if you're interested in getting extra content with me throughout the month and if you're interested in supporting the channel and also potentially getting either a 10%, a 20% discount on your readings or one one reading with me in each month included in your monthly subscription. Uh, that's a great way to support the channel and as always it's a great way to get extra content with me throughout the month. Thank you to all of my current patrons. Without you guys, I would not be able to be here. Patreon.com slash Divine Conversations. The link to that can be found in the description box below. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. The links to those can also be found on the, in the description box below. And as always, please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Sharing these readings with your friends and family or anyone who you feel like may really benefit from the reading is highly, highly encouraged. With that said, I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading, or I'm sorry, our next sip of tea tomorrow. Yeah? Excellent. Bye. <laughs>